So you're new to building PCs and, uh, well, you know how to build a PC, you're not quite sure which parts to pick for your build for your budget. Hopefully this video will help you with that and kind of work out uh, what the best option is for your price range and all that sort of stuff and help decide between very uh, controversial topics. Check out techteamgb.co.uk for more awesome news, reviews and other stuff including more information on this product and many more. Stick around for this awesome video. Hi guys and welcome to Tech Team GB. Now I'm going to start off with a very uh, clear point that a lot of people might already know about and that is a tool called pcpartpicker.co.uk.com. It's a website that allows you to list all the parts uh, that you're going to have in your system including stuff like operating system, monitor and all the other peripherals but also all the internal options and it has pricing and available of them listed on the site so if you want to use that and also you can share that list with people so that they can uh, suggest things and it will tell you if everything is compatible so if it says that it's compatible the PC will work although obviously it doesn't take into account certain nuances of uh, compatibility but anyway it's a really great tool and I'll leave a link to both uh, the general website and also the uh, list that I end up coming up with uh, in this video in the description down below. If you're looking for advice on specific components, you can use this menu to click uh, the annotation and basically go to the place in the video that that resides. So I'll leave this for a few more seconds while you uh, take your pick, otherwise we'll uh, jump into uh, the first bit. So the first part is the case and that will determine what motherboard, PSU, fan, CPU, cooler, GPU and storage solutions you have, so do bear that in mind. Realistically, just pick something that you like the look of and that fits everything you want inside it that is uh, apparently, according to reviewers, easy to build in. If all of those things are met and you like the look of it and you can afford it, then it's a really awesome case for you. Personally, I like the uh, Fantex N3 Evolve ATX, although the Bitfinex Neos is apparently a really good shout for the more budget range or really anything in between, as said, if it meets those criteria, then go for that one. So the next part is the CPU and that determines what motherboard and CPU cooler you have as well as technically graphics cards too. Now on the budget range, an Athlon X4 860K is a really great shout. It's a pretty fantastic CPU for the price, uh, so if you're looking for a sort of three, four hundred pound budget or maybe even five hundred pound, uh, five hundred dollars, then an Athlon X 860K is a really great shout. A little higher up, an i5 6600K or 6700K are really the sweet spot in terms of performance per pound right now. And if you're looking for more performance, especially if you're video editing and stuff like that, then a 5820K or if you need multiple graphics cards, a 5930K are really Really great shouts in this space so I definitely recommend one of those although if you're on a budget build an A60K is going to be fantastic for you. In terms of motherboards, that will obviously determine what storage I/O and GPUs you have. And realistically, anything in the top three sort of uh, vendors, so ASUS, Gigabyte, and MSI, uh, possibly ASRock as well, are really fantastic. They're all going to work fine. So just pick the one that's right for your CPU. So if you've got an 860K, it will be an FM2 Plus. If you've got a 6700K, it will be a Z170 board. And realistically, and just look at the different, so the three or four different boards at that price point, and pick the one that's the best review that you like the look of the most with the best features. RAM is next and that obviously determines the functionality so realistically if you're only gaming 8 or 16 gigs is going to be plenty fine just make sure you get uh, DDR3 if you've gone for the AMD build or DDR4 if you're going for a Z170 build. As I said if you're video editing then something like 16 or 32 will be useful but that definitely depends on your budget so do bear that in mind. Graphics cards are normally a pretty hot topic with a lot of fanboyism, but basically I recommend just picking what works the, the best at this point in time in terms of price per dollar or price per pound, because uh, while the features do differ slightly, I mean, you've obviously got FreeSync and G-Sync being basically the same technology, but uh, sort of different in terms of what monitor you'd have to buy, it's actually pretty easy to, to pick a graphics card. Look at the features and look at the pricing uh, and look at the benchmarks and determine what one is the best value for money at the point in time that you're buying one and if there's any features that you prefer over the other one, so maybe drivers or maybe hardware features. Just take a look. Cooling is actually another rather simple one. Get a Cooler Master Hyper 212, whether that's the Plus, the X, the Evo or whatever else is available, just get one of those. If you are planning on overclocking though, then something like the Clomaster Neptune 120XL or Corsair's H100 or H80 uh, might be a really good shout. Generally speaking, in terms of thermal paste, I don't recommend that you get uh, any extra stuff, although if you were planning on getting some extra stuff, Coolmaster's Maker Gel is actually really nice. 
Now a lot of people tend to go a bit overkill in terms of power supplies, including myself with my 1200 watt Cooler Master unit, but basically because of my real world power draw test with even Fury X's and 980i's, I didn't see more than 300 watts pulled at the wall even with an i5 6600K, so realistically something like an EVGA 500B is going to be a great shout for most people, if not all, although obviously you can get semi-modular units like this XFX one or fully modular ones, and you can also get cable extensions, so if you're looking for a very sort of show off type of build then that may be something you want to look at but uh, my, my advice is take a look at what the sort of cheapest high you know good brand is so the EVGA one is a good shout or Coolmaster of Corsair. In terms of storage I definitely recommend an SSD even for the budget build it really makes your PC so much faster at least feels faster anyway a lot more responsive and uh, my suggestion would be you get a 128 gig SSD and a one terabyte hard drive if you're on a budget or if you've got a little bit bigger budget something like a 2 or 4 terabyte, especially if you're planning on doing video editing, and something like a 256 or a 512 gig SSD is going to really help you out. Also, just a quick shout, optical drives aren't really something I recommend, although you can put them in as they're relatively cheap, but I'd recommend saving your money. So of course this doesn't include certain uh, nuances of building a PC like design and aesthetics and also doesn't take into account uh, stuff like driver updates or DirectX 12 which is going to be a big game changer over the next, uh, well at least the, the not too distant future or pricing either. Now the, it's kind of common sense really just look at what reviewers say, look at what people who own the stuff say and my two general rules for you know building a gaming PC is spend the most amount of money you can on your graphics card and don't cheap out on your power supply because that can ruin the entire system. Other than that, uh, if you are building a new PC and you're looking for advice, feel free to leave the spec list or the PC part picker link in the description or the comments down below uh, and hopefully myself and other people who are more knowledgeable on the topic can help you out and guide you to, uh, at least guide you to the right parts and then uh, hopefully maybe build the, help you build the PC. So um, as I said, feel free to leave that in the comments down below. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, feel free to let me know how it helped in the comments down below. If there's something I missed or if there's something that you feel uh, you know, wasn't correct uh, as say then uh, feel free to leave that in the comments down below as well and I may make a revised video in the future with that uh, if you guys leave enough sort of uh, improvements in the comments down below as well. Um, and also real quick before you go, um, if PC Part Picker recommends that you use, uh, buy something from Amazon or if you're buying anything else from Amazon, it'd be awesome if you use my affiliate link for that, it really does help me out, I'm not asking you to spend any more money just clicking something before you buy something you're already going to buy um, and it genuinely is helping me keep the lights on and stuff so uh, yeah, thank you for that and uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video.